Alexa, Lehman, Ross, Rogel, Dawn, or Baneblade, which are going to be shaping up to be best in the new Astra Militarum Codex. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking guard armour, and certainly one question that I had when we knew that guard were getting a new book will be what flavour of tanks will be most effective in taking and receiving damage and manning the battle line. Obviously each of these will have their own pros and cons in addition to their raw numbers and things, so I thought it would be good to take a video to go over the main capabilities of each tank, do a little bit of math hammer to compare the damage and durability of the three units, and then talk through some of the other pros and cons of each tank. Let's jump in then, go through each tank very briefly, and then run a few numbers. First up we have the All Reliable in the Lehman Ross Battle Tank, a heavy support choice at 155 points now, that's after you've paid for the mandatory hull weapon. It's a toughness 8 battle tank with a 10 inch move and 13 wounds with a 2 plus save, and all three of these battle tanks do have a fair few similarities, they move 10 inches, have their 2 plus armour, and all get the turret weapon keyword with hitting on 3s and firing out of combat with their main guns. Perhaps the major differences between the Lehman Ross and the other two are that you can take them in squadrons, and weapons wise you can take a much more flexible choice of sponsons, heavy bolters, multi-melters, plasma cannons or heavy flamers, and I'd say that it's got easily the best flexibility on the turret weapon, with a bunch of different weapons at different ranges, depending on what battlefield you roll you want it to fill. We did talk about the best turret weapons in a previous video, here are just a few numbers for various different damage outputs against a bunch of different targets. Overall my main takeaway from that video was that there were a fair few more interesting ones. I feel like perhaps my favourite were the Executioner Plasma Cannon and the Vanquisher Cannon. Really big punchy shots with a bunch of AP and of course the Vanquisher Cannon ignoring Imbles. The Battle Cannon and Demolisher Cannon both being very interesting and of course Gatekeeper being great if you're running it on a tank commander. For today's comparison I thought we'd use the Executioner Plasma Cannon. It's the best or nearly the best in the vast majority of these categories, particularly good against Armour of Contempt. If you want something that can deal with tanks and infantry, it does seem very very solid, though it might cause a few mortal wounds to itself over the course of the game. I'd also be tempted to pick up the very cheap heavy bolt responses, if not upgrade to something more. For our next contender we've got the Rogal Dawn, this one's a bigger boy at 250 points base. The main stat line upgrades it has are 17 wounds and a big toughness of 9, which we'll get onto in a second. It does make it a lot more durable against strength 8 weapons. It's got the option of just the two main guns rather than the many varieties of Lehman Ross, and weirdly enough the twin battle cannon is flatly inferior against just about every target, so I'd take the oppressor cannon for the strength 10 and big damage 4. Otherwise the whole weapon seemed kind of balanced, a 12 shot castigator gatling cannon or a mini battle cannon in a pulverizer cannon, it can take heavy bolts and multi melters on the sponsons, gets a free heavy stubber and then can mount a few more small guns on the hull as well, either melty guns or heavy stubbers too. This thing really is covered in guns, with the oppressor cannon you also get a coaxial auto cannon as well, so it's got quite a lot of small arms to devise various different ways if you want to. Again, I feel like it's pretty reasonable to bolt on the extra guns, maybe just the heavy bolters and extra stubbers if you just want a little bit of volume fire. Lastly, in our guard armour contest, we've got the Baneblade, 470 points for the standard one. This thing is understandably bigger again, a Lord of War Titanic model with a toughness of 9 and 30 wounds rather than the 17 of the Rogal Dawn, but of course paying a big points cost for that privilege. The Baneblades now all come with a set of sponsors included for free, either twin heavy bolters or twin heavy flamers plus las cannons, and the other one is only 40 points for the pair, which I think is well worth it. Weapons and upgrade wise, there's of course 8 different variants of Baneblade, again I made a video comparing them kind of recently. A few of them are certainly a bit more interesting than others, the Shadow Sword wins against armour a bit, though high imbal saves could make it very swingy, but otherwise as more general purpose versions, the Storm Sword, Bane Sword and Baneblade are all pretty decent all rounders. Some of them slightly better or worse depending on exactly what target that they're firing at. I thought we'd use the standard Bane Blade for today's comparison. I feel like it's a pretty reasonable choice. So first we've got damage output, and here are the three tanks that we're comparing are the Lehman Ross Executioner with the Las Cannon Heavy Bolt Sponsons, the Rogal Dawn with the Oppressor Cannon, for this one I gave the Pulverizer Cannon Heavy Bolt Sponsons and Extra Stubbers, and then a standard Bane Blade with the extra set of Sponsons included, that'd be 510 points. To compare their damage, I thought we'd take aim at some slightly heavier targets, some Terminators, a Toughness 7 vehicle with a 3 plus save, and a Toughness 8 vehicle that's got a 5 plus invul and minus 1 damage, something that's probably hard to kill like say a Plague Burst Crawler. Obviously this doesn't really cover everything, there's no light infantry listed here, but I do feel that maybe the heavier targets are the most important to be good against, as Guard as an army just tend to have a whole load of extra random light infantry firepower going, 
whether it's buckets of las guns, hotshot attacks, or just cheap bolt-on heavy bolters or stubbers with the tanks, which will whistle down infantry okay anyway. All these damage outputs are at just within 24 inch range to get the Baneblaze Demolisher Cannon going and the Rogal Dawn's Pulverizer Cannon. And overall it does seem to be a pretty good performance for the Lehman Ross Executioner here. Against the Terminators it's massively in the lead, the big AP-4 really coming in clutch against them. 1.6 dead per 100 points worth of model, basically 60% more efficient against them than the other two, which is really quite a lot. Against a fairly standard issue Toughness 7 vehicle with no other defence, it also just slightly comes out ahead as well. 6.2 wounds per 100, the Rogal Dawn is in second place there with 5, and the Bane Blade trailing behind with 4.3. Finally, against the Toughness 8 vehicle with the 5 plus invul and minus 1 damage, it's actually the Rogal Dawn that seems to win this conflict slightly. 2.9 wounds per 100 points, mainly due to the Oppressor Cannon not caring quite so much about the minus 1 damage, but the other two really aren't too far behind with 2.4 each. Overall, I'd say by these numbers, I'd say it's a bit of a win for the Ross here against these particular targets. It is also further helped out by the fact that it's got the best range out of any of these. The Lehman Ross's three guns are all 36 inches, where the Rogal Dawn and the Bane Blade both have a whole mounted gun that's 24 inches. There are some trade-offs for the Executioner though, unless you've got, say, the Tank Order for re-roll ones to hit, then you're likely taking a mortal wound each time you shoot which does maybe take the shine off the damage output a little bit, though to be honest if you are building around executioners, then having those tank orders does seem pretty reasonable to have around. If we'd switched up the variants here a little bit, then a demolisher tank would have done a bit worse against the terminators, but would actually have the Ross winning against the toughness 8 vehicle, so it is a bit of a side grade there, and it would have been very similar for the vanquisher cannon, putting the terminators down to just one dead, after the toughness 8 vehicle it also would have had the Ross in first place. Otherwise, it's kind of similar if we'd used a Shadow Sword for the Baneblade version. Just in terms of raw numbers on average, you do do better against the Toughness 8 and Toughness 7 vehicle by a fair way. It is super swingy though, often doing 12 wounds or nothing, and really wouldn't get on with enemies spiking well on inball saves, or you're just having a particularly unlucky roll with the gun. In any case, moving on to base durability of the three tanks, they all have a 2 plus save, and the main difference is the Lehman Ross has a Toughness 8, whereas the others have Toughness 9. It does mean that toughness comparisons are fairly simple to calculate though. The only weapons that toughness 9 is usually going to matter against are strength 8 and 9, so you can divide them out and then just look at the rest. Basically if the tank is attacked by anything besides a strength 8 or strength 9 weapon, then usually the Ross is going to come out ahead. You get 8.4 wounds for every 100 points spent on the tank, compared with 6.8 and 6.4 for the Dawn and the Bane Blade, putting the Ross around about 25% more durable against anything that doesn't fall into those brackets. The one that the Dawn and the Ross really win out against are strength 8 weapons, anything like missile launchers, melter guns, bright lances, that sort of thing. The Rogal Dawn tank is going to be around about 21% more tough than the Lehman Ross against those, taking around about 11 or 12 missile launcher shots to kill 100 points worth of the tank, rather than 9 or 10 for the Ross. The Dawn's basically 21% tougher against this kind of fire, and the Bane Blade winds up kind of in the middle. For strength 9 weapons though, they're all really quite close together, the Dawn's a little bit tougher than the Ross by about 7%, it doesn't make quite as much difference wounding on 4s versus wounding on 3s, so a small win for the Dawn there, the Bane Blade is kind of similar to the Ross on that profile. Overall I'd rate durability as kind of close, it does depend on how many strength 8 weapons there are in the meta and being aimed at you. The Bane Blade is slightly inferior to the Dawn on raw durability, though not by much, and between the Dawn and the Ross, I do feel like it's really quite well balanced to be honest. The Dawn does have some good protection against some of the most common anti-tank profiles. Though the Ross being better against really strong stuff or lighter chip damage, I think really balances out quite nicely. So overall for damage and defence, I'd probably give damage a slight win to the Lehman Ross. And then durability, rate the Ross and the Dawn pretty well balanced versus each other. It just depends on what you're fighting and what sort of fire is going to be coming at you. Going through the various sections of the codex, here are just a few advantages and disadvantages on each of the rest of the tanks. The Ross and the Dawn do have some pretty decent advantages over the Bane Blade in that they get the Battle Tank and Squadron keywords. This allows them to get tank orders, which are pretty powerful and flexible synergy, access some stratagems a lot better and cheaper, and also some character buffs like the Lord Solar rerolls. For the Ross specifically though, I do quite like the way that you get slightly cheaper ablative placing for it for just 2 CP rather than 3. That makes it a lot more usable to my mind, and it's very nice if you're just allowed to get hit by a bunch of damage to weapons or something. The Ross also gets to be fielded in squadrons as well, which I think is actually quite a powerful advantage, as heavy support slots might be a bit on the limited side, guard to have rather a lot of usable ones. And as mentioned earlier, the Ross is the most flexible in terms of tourist and sponsor choices, 
You can take the scary Vanquisher cannon if you want to add some dedicated anti-armor and anti-impulse. Plus the sponsor choices are nice. You could have plasma cannons, heavy bolters, heavy flamers or multi-melters depending on what made sense. You can also choose to field standard Lehman Rosses as a tank commander in the HQ slot. It only costs an extra 10 points more and gets you orders and the option of gatekeeper as well. I think typically for most guard lists, it usually makes sense to have one or two tank commanders backed up by a bunch of battle tanks, rather than spamming commanders anymore which can't order themselves. Finally for the Ross, it's also got the smallest profile and is easiest to hide as well. Definitely a positive behind obscuring terrain and popping it in and out to try and take out enemy units. For the Rogal Dawn, as mentioned, it's got the battle tank and squadron for the synergies, though the ablative plating is a bit more expensive on it. I'd say perhaps the single biggest selling point that it has over the Ross is that it's a bigger cost unit to get more value out of many of the same stratagems and buffs and things. Say for example tank aces cost the same on this guy and you're basically buffing a bigger unit to get more value out of them. And same for things like an astropath with night shroud. If you're making an even bigger and tougher unit harder to kill you're going to get more value out of it there as well. Certainly doesn't hurt to have a lot of firepower and defence all concentrated in one target if the buffs are going to be just as easy to put on it. I feel like that vaunted Praetorian tank case seems to be a really great tank order source as well unless it happens to get FAQs. That one you can put on the Rogue or Dawn and have it ordering itself. Finally for the Baneblade, with the pros and cons compared with the others, I feel like there are a few more obvious disadvantages. The major advantage that it has is actually being pretty happy being up close and personal to the enemy. Its melee damage is genuinely quite decent, and particularly so with Crush Them for hitting on threes and mortal wounds. It can also be a bit flexible moving in and out of combat, being able to fall back and shoot with its core titanic rules. Again, even more so than the Rogal Dawn, it's a massive great big focal unit that will very much like any damage or defensive buffs that you can get. Perhaps the main issue is that most of the buffs either can't be used on it or effectively cost more somehow to put them on a Baneblade. Whether it's the tank aces costing more points directly, stratagems being more expensive, or things like that Night Shroud psychic power only being able to be cast on absurdly high casting values. Really nice on things that it can use easily though, say for example 1 CP for its smoke launchers, or things like a Tet Priest Engine Seer giving it a 5 plus invul save. As for downsides though, the Titanic keyword does have its drawbacks. It means that you're going to be able to be targeted behind obscuring terrain if you can draw any line of sight at all. It won't be able to get dense cover. The huge hole can cause some movement issues as well. Some movement lanes it's just not going to be able to fit through. As mentioned, it's got lots of different synergies that it can't access. Things like the tank orders in particular will be missed unless you've got Lord Solar on the board or something. And it won't even be getting its standard regimental doctrines if you don't have the tank ace trait. If you're using a super heavy auxiliary detachment, as per the core rules, they don't get detachment abilities. You'd need the full triple super heavy detachment if you wanted that. So overall, bringing it all together, these are my initial thoughts. I feel like Lehman Rosses are still likely to be the king of the heavy support section. They're very customizable to the role that you want, have arguably the best damage output of the three. And I feel like having multiple ones in the heavy support slots is particularly relevant, especially as several vehicles lost their squadron rules. I think in general, most competitive guard armies are going to be largely skewing towards the Lehman Ross compared with the other two. I feel like they've just got a lot of good things going for them. The Rogal Dawn, on the other hand, really has fairly similar numbers to the Ross in terms of damage or defense, just not being able to customize it quite so much. It certainly could be running a big chunky battle line of three of the things. It would be very intimidating, but I feel like for most lists, the biggest decision might be whether or not to include one within a Lehman Ross battle line and then use it as a big focal piece to put on any of your best synergies, say Vaunted Praetorian, Night Shroud, or the Lord Solar rerolls. All of those are going to be a bit more efficient on a big 250 point tank rather than a 150 point one. It maybe just feels a little bit less focused than the Rust though, with a bunch of different guns ideally wanting to be shooting at different targets. Finally, I feel like the Baneblade is likely to still be the most niche of the three in the new Guard Codex, certainly far better than what it was in the previous one, but it still just seems to be a little bit behind in terms of raw numbers and damage, and then comes with a bunch of drawbacks as well, like the Regimental Doctrines thing, and the big Titanic vehicle issues that it has with terrain. Still though, having a ton of your firepower all concentrated in a massive 30 wound toughness 9 2 plus save platform definitely has its perks. A bunch of armies without particularly good anti-tank are really going to struggle to bring it down. And you could afford to play a little bit more aggressive with it, going into combat, and maybe even taking the flame sponsons perhaps. Probably the most niche of the three, but I feel like building round 1 could be pretty interesting. It might just do a bit better against some armies than others perhaps. I'll be interested to hear your guys' takes though, out of these three tanks, which are the ones that you're most looking forward to putting on the battlefield in the new guard book? In your opinion, which is better, Lehman Ross, Rogal Dawn or Baneblade? Please tell me why down in the comments.
If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. We'll certainly be keeping the regular guard videos coming, and I'll tend to post something new for 40k just about every day. If you'd like something else to watch, then I'll link my Baneblade unit review down in the video description. It goes into a bit more detail about damage comparison between the various different turrets. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can also find that link below in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.